curious about as far as the censorship and stuff and as deep as you want to get into it but has who has specifically i guess uh the music industry uh listening platforms the band has said kind of john take it easy john maybe stay take a step back john careful what you say have you received that at all no from my manager he was just like look maybe maybe you guys are going a little too far you know Sounds for, familiar for both is Serge it, and is I. It being real? Yeah, I love him. <laughs> and we did, you know, we did have a private text conversation between me, Bino, and and Serge. And again, I think because Serge views himself in a way where he's really doing the right thing, right? Right. And he really does care about people, and he does a lot for for uh, individuals. Um, and our nation as right. well, and well, people, you guys both do a lot for Saw. Yes, and and for people that people, you know, he's really trying to help people. Serge, I believe he's a good person, inherently, but um, again, it's that moral high ground that they think they're on, that perceived moral high ground, kind of blinds them to um, being open about ideas that might be wrong on. You know? Well, I mean, I, yeah, I went through the same thing. My my guitar player, uh, Doc, and we've been friends for almost twenty years. And we've been, you know, you know, this is this this was the budding of heads, you know, these these points. And, you know, I made a I did a video that a lot of people saw that went viral and I took had a bunch of markers and I basically deconstructed BLM and how the the media was making money off of it and that and who was funding it. And I named some names that the forbidden names and uh, it went viral. It wound up, you know, it was like 37 million views. It was like world star every, you know. And uh, and I I said racism is manufactured because you know how I know the media, I know how they are. So I've fed them a line that they could tear me apart with in order to. It was a Trojan horse, and then they carried the video right. to all these platforms. And um, you know, it for Doc, it was mortifying on so many levels because it the reality of what I was suggesting or explaining ripped a hole in everything that he believes in and then i was being vilified and that's you know i, I he he came out with a statement and you know i i was like uh, you know okay the flip side of that is keep in mind when system came out it was everybody was so pro-american mm -hmm. right especially after 9 11. oh yeah you know you, I mean, you couldn't find a flag to buy mm -hmm. everybody was a patriot right and Serge was saying things that were like, well, maybe you should look into things a little bit more. Mm -hmm. What's our culpability? You know, what's our involvement in this? And it, it, we got a massive backlash backlash for it. And I, I was 100% behind Serge mm -hmm. during that time. And I actually wrote a statement myself that was posted on our, on our website in support of Serge, and basically saying, look, although the timing of it is is poorly chosen, what he's saying has validity. So I don't want people to think that, you know there's been some kind of like uh, lifelong opposition to each other. We, yeah. agree on, we are agree on more things than we disagree on. Well, somewhere along the line, some of your views changed because you did your own research. Well, I've always had these views. But again... I think 2020 in general is bringing this out of it. Well, it makes you, you know? go to an extreme. Yeah. Right? I'll be voting for Trump. Mm. My wife, who is a lifelong Democrat, will be voting for Trump. And it's really because, not because of necessarily my influence on her, but I said, look, just go do the research on your own mm -hmm. and find out what you find out. And then vote your conscience, which is what everybody should do. Legally, vote your conscience. Yeah, and it's, not, it's like, I think it's become almost like a popularity contest. <laughs> and it's not, to me, it's policy uh, uh, over likability, you know? It's it's easy to not like Trump. It's very easy. He's he not traditional. No, he not says a lot of really stupid things. He tweets even stupid other things. Oh, it's true. But you, you <laughs> do you want a president who's the guy you want to hang out with, right? Because Obama was as charismatic as mm -hmm. it gets, right? He was a cool dude. That's, cool that's dude. a hard follow up. Exactly, but very diversive, mm -hmm. right? Uh, diverse? Did I say diversive? No. You said diversive. But that's not what I meant to say. I meant to say he was... Deceptive? He, he was deceptive and he was a divider. Mm -hmm. Right? 
And he continually blasted the United States for being racist and all these things. And of course, racism exists. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are racist, you know. Um, but are we bigoted? But right? the, do we give do, people equal opportunity? Are people allowed to be like my thing? My my issues with racism are very simple. I would rather any everyone who's racist to just be like, I'm racist. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like, <laughs> it's just like knowing what neighborhood not to be in, you know. And it's like, uh, I don't, I don't think that as a society, you know, I think extremist radicalism and hate groups. No, anything with criminality. No, which Antifa and BLM now fall into that category with this with their 2020 campaign of whatever it is that they're yeah, doing, especially Antifa. Yeah, I mean it's it, that's they're trained, you know. They're they're, they're literally. Insurgents, yeah. basically. I'm curious yeah. to know is so because uh, I again I don't claim that I am like the super pol pol political person, but would would far radical left be considered BLM Antifa? I think Antifa more than BLM. Antifa, okay, so yeah. Antifa is what's considered far radical left. What's considered far radical right? Guys with AKs in front of a store instead of just a no i think i think the alt-right i think that you know the the hyper conservative um hyper religious hyper -re yeah very uh, per persecuting religious in other words if you don't believe in christianity like judeo-christian values yeah but only judeo-christian values right. yeah um then there's the alt-right which is completely different but if you if you're talking about just politically you have uh far left far right that's really just ideology right right mm -hmm. it's not it's not actionable in a violent way right right antifa is is actionable in a violent way they've proven that mm -hmm. you know and black lives matter has been sucked into that so initially i think black lives matter although i don't agree with their agenda were a peaceful movement but they got sucked into antifa mm -hmm. and they associated with antifa and they became more and more violent as things progressed. So now, you know, you have the most um, damage done in um, in cities, you know, as far as like in the billions, right? Mm -hmm. In history. In the history of the United States. And this is all done um, in the name of progress when you can't have progress when you're, when you're destroying things. But I think it's so important to be looking at everything because I feel like from Deviant Gentlemen to our personal pages, What's going to come through what we're just looking at if we're just scrolling and not looking around is what's considered super right, where, where it's always just showing these Antifa things and uh, how bad the left is. And I'm curious if, if you just like anything somewhat left or democratic, if it only shows you, like in other words, my feed has never shown me anything where there's good, peaceful protests. I mean, there has to be some, right? And no, I, that course. never comes up. Nobody's making a video of that that's because not sensationalized, right? Because that's yeah. not going to make me go. You know what? I hate, I hate, I hate. But it's that's also not going to make you say, okay, it's not interesting enough for right. people. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's not, not going to make the, the so, CNN. CNN spends most of their time making old white people scared. Right. And Fox mm -hmm. News spends most of their time making old white people scared. Right. Mm -hmm. That's their agenda because mm -hmm. scared people view a lot longer, will continue to watch and take in that information and, and the advertising dollars coming in mm -hmm. longer. That's the idea. They're not news organizations anymore. We have to understand that. You know, they're, they're still fairly. I actually like Al Jazeera a lot. As a news organization, I like the BBC. Yeah, in BBC's general. good. I watched Al Jazeera for a long time. Then, yeah, then I found a documentary about how it's like a, <laughs> a propagated. It's like Qatar has pumped all this money into uh, you know. Well, it, it was. Uh, it's just a behind the scenes on every, almost every form of media outlet. I'm just curious, what do we consider our democracy? Democracy right now, if the media is so wrong and and so deceptive and. I mean, if if all this stuff is allowed from unpeaceful protest, all this stuff, and and there's no anybody to do anything about it, what what, where are we at in a democracy you have to, already? You have to search out other f ways to find information. You have to understand that you know all the major news organizations that we have today are owned by corporations, mm -hmm. and those corporations have agendas, and that agenda is to make money. Mm -hmm. That's their only purpose. They don't give a shit about anybody. 
They don't care about Black Lives Matter any more than the NFL does or the NBA does. They're, it's just perception. They want to be perceived as, uh, as being on the right side of history, when in reality they're on the wrong side of history. They're just not brave enough to admit it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you have to find credible sources that haven't been bought and paid for yet. And then when they get bought and paid for, you have to find another one. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. You know, right. it's far Do you find it increasingly harder to find these sources when it seems like there's a kind of a, a, a social media censorship war against anyone who, I guess, is a defector from the script, you know? Once again, you have very powerful entities, very big corporations that own these social media platforms and the money behind them. So you have to question like, if, if the agenda for them that they're that they want to push is this agenda should that be the one that you support right like mm -hmm. you know if the government wants something in general you have to question whether that's good for you long term or if that's the right thing to do and um these massive corporations these 50 60 100 billion dollar corporations are no different why do they want you to think a certain way why are they pushing this agenda people don't seem to have an interest in asking these questions but later, right, when the pendulum swings hard the other way, which it always does, swings hard one way, then it goes harder the other way, you have to have the wherewithal to also question, at that point, why an agenda is being pushed forward, and that's a popularized agenda. At the end of the day, we're just meant to be divided at all times, questioned at all times, broke at all times, chasing dollars at all times, and constantly in debt. I just think the level of hate is so high right now through uh, like even on that post that you made. And I was I scrolled through the comments for as long as I could. And it's just like this one, it, you know, someone says, hate something hateful about you. And then someone comments to that. This one comes in. Now, these two are in it for the next 10 minutes. Just it, and it's completely off topic of what you posted to get in personal. I posted just Let's, to mess with people like a flower. Mm -hmm. Just see what they put underneath it. Yeah. It's incredible where they go with it. 